That's the easy option. You might not get as big a discount as sponsorship, but that is the easier option because you hand over your money and then there's no commitment further on to that. Now, the catch-22 is, do we need the equipment that my teammates are asking me for? So there's one person in your team that needs a new helmet. Do we go along and get that 20% sponsorship from that helmet company because only one person in the team needs that helmet? Yeah? Maybe it's better off that one person gets a 10, 20% discount and the rest of the money can be put towards training. At the end of the day, what you want to be doing is getting better at skydiving, getting your medals, your awards, all that sort of thing, coming to the AGM, standing on that stage, getting one of those presentations, because you've won bronze, silver, gold in your discipline. So there's a real big catch-22 of what the team needs to what the individual needs, and whether or not your money is better spent, say, team training than it is buying products. So that's the catch-22 of when you take discount. It means that most of the team can probably save their money in the pot for training compared to taking sponsorship. Next slide. So, if you're going to take the sponsorship route, there's a variety of channels you can go through. You can get gear manufacturers, such as rigs, etc. Drop zones can give you cheaper rate jumps, maybe free jumps in return. Tunnels can normally give you either some low hourly rates or some free tunnel time, normally at 4 or 5 in the morning, shall we say, if it's ever free. Um, the BPA can give you funding as a selection point. Or you can do corporate if you've got some really close connections. Or the other option also is your company. It might not be physical, but it might be free holiday, that sort of thing. Anna. Yeah, so just following on what Maria was saying, gear. I mean, I know you look, out, look around, a lot of teams that are out there at the moment, they've all got matching gear, uh, matching rigs, and uh, matching jackets. <laughs> um, if you look closely down the, uh, the side of our jackets, you can see our uh, sponsors that we had for this team. Um, but the most important thing is when you're a team and when you're forming your team and when you're trying to compete or you're trying to go to competitions or you're trying to just get better as a team, is to make sure that you invest in the time in your actual skydiving or your tunnel skills, whatever it is you need to get there. So you've got to come up with, the, you've got to think to yourselves, what, it is that, what is it that we need for the team to get ourselves on that podium or... To, to do a certain event or to get to a world meet, as an example. So, well, some of the quick wins for, for teams, and uh, which I'll give you a few examples of in the past, is that you can have matching t-shirts. I know that we've all got different t-shirts on today, but we've all, each of us, <laughs> yeah, Anna can show you her uh, NFTO uh, t-shirt. I've got an Icarus t-shirt on, and uh, Maria's got a Javelin t-shirt on, and any, if you look underneath somewhere, she's got a, uh, NF, an Icarus t-shirt, another NFTO t-shirt. <laughs> So, you know, there are some pictures up here that you can see of us, of different teams and different forms of different t-shirts on. So you can see here that we're all wearing matching t-shirts. Yes, we do also have matching jumpsuits as well. But the point is, is that you can, as a team, you feel like a team and as a unit, as you're walking around a drop zone or going to events, just by wearing team t-shirts. That's pretty much enough and it's like a low budget option for you. The other things you can look at, probably next up in the line of gear, is jumpsuits. And here we've got a prime example of uh, NFTO, or wearing their matching jumpsuits. But what you will notice, if you look very closely, we'll look at this one first, is the fact that we're all wearing different rigs. So this year, or last year with NFTO, we decided to get jump matching jumpsuits, but thought we'd rather invest our time in our training, in the tunnel and in the sky. So we thought, we don't need to have matching rigs. We want to go and compete. We want to go and show, show what we can do. We don't necessarily need rigs to do that. And I guess another picture here you can see of uh, some members of various ex-world uh, medalists uh, and a current world champion there with Roy standing there. They're all wearing different jumpsuits with a variety of different sponsors on their jumpsuits, not all the same. But there they are, and they can show that you, you don't need matching gear to go and do an awesome job. So, you know, one of the examples that we had from Kaizen a few years ago was that when we all started out as a team, this was probably 2013, Maria, that's yep. right? Um, we started out as a team, and um, David will know this is right at the back. We started out and we had, we talked about whether we wanted matching gear or we wanted matching containers, and we, you know, we said, you know what, we're a new team, we need to get in the tunnel or we need to train. So what we're going to do is get in the tunnel and train, and then get in the sky and train. So we didn't get matching jumpsuits for our first competition. We didn't have any matching gear at all for the first year. And we had, the only thing we had, I think, was pretty much matching T-shirts. Oh, yeah, and we had matching trainers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we started that one off, matching trainers. 
And, um, and I think the second year, what that brought was that we were a unit together, we made sure that we invested all of our time in our training, and we had a nice tight battle at nationals with former ISIS, Anna was a member of, and um, we then went, for the, then we had selection for the, the championships the following year, and then we discussed with, uh, with uh, gear manufacturers, etc., whether we could get um, certain discounts on, on rigs and stuff like that. So then we did eventually get matching rigs. But it's an example of what you can do. Um, you know, so you start off with t-shirts, jumpsuits, then you can think about helmets, alties, AADs, rigs. Buying as a team can save you money um, on needed gear. And generally, as we're going to talk about in a bit, most gear manufacturers will want to like make sure that you're showing yourselves as a team as well. But as we said, the most important thing is your training. It doesn't matter what you're doing, it's what you're actually showing off is your skill set in the sky. So that's it for gear. So details and tunnels, locations. Obviously, you need it's a, you want to train. You want to you've got to train somewhere. Um, there's plenty of places that can offer you good discounts, but you've got to have the payback. You, nothing comes for free, as you said. Um, you, your TZ, your DZ or your tunnel might be able to offer a better rate, um, but they also might may be able to offer free stuff. However, if you're getting free time or free jumps, that you cannot expect that without a payback. There's no such thing as free jumps without without payback. They need for DZ or tunnel to give you free airflow. You'll need to do a lot of work to get that back, unless you happen to be, I don't know, married into the sport or something. That's the only, only option. But you really need to be prepared to put the time back in. What they'll need generally will be the free coaching, organising events, um, doing publicity, and it's really important that you're doing publicity um, for the DZ or, or the tunnel. Every time you're training there, every time you're coaching there, letting people know you, that you're there, knowing that, that how much you managed to achieve that place. Letting the rest of the world, the rest of the skydiving community know that you, you guys are going to get quality training in and get get quality training in, get the and get the facilities are good. You need to let everybody know what's what you're gaining from that, those places. Oh yes, yes. So there's uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we've also done, as well as doing coaching events, we've also brought, there's other ways that you can bring um, publicity to the, uh, to the, to your DZ, uh, where's the old team, ISIS, which we did change the name of. Um, also, as our old team, we uh, ended up doing some filming with the James May TV programme, um, and four of our members were, did a lot of videoing, and we were actually on BBC on Christmas Day. Um, but again, that never even was featured during that. And so again, there's really good publicity for the for the DZ by give, bringing back um, TV work or advertising, anything that you can make the, that DZ or that tunnel more popular or appear more popular. Then that's that's what the, that's what DZ wants. You can't expect to have free jumps, free tunnel, um, and expect them to um, just give it to you with, without you throwing stuff back at it. Um, as we're talking about publicity, it's doing social media, even if you don't have a website as a team, but social media, um, and it's not just Facebook as well. Even though skydiving community exists a lot on Facebook, um, a lot of business communities are on Twitter. And so it's having to do that duly a lot of, um, especially when it comes to corporate, which I'll move on to next, but it's uh, trying, having dual feeds on Facebook and Twitter to, to, to help push the word out. But also, obviously, you're advertising on the DZ or Tunnel websites if they want you to, providing the DZ or Tunnel images of what you're doing, to providing DZ or Tunnel with video footage so they can use your images and footage as well. And corporates. Corporates. This is rare in the sport. It's rare, but it's not, it's not impossible. It really is not impossible. It's not what you know when it comes to corporate sponsorship. It's, it's who you know. It's having the right links with the right people, as someone of large companies, knowing to, if, if you have an in or knowing someone within a large company, um, the top of a large company, who's got the power to, to allocate some of their sponsorship funds. You've got to sell yourself as a team. Um, when we, we do have a small amount of corporate sponsorship from NFTO, and yes, when I went to sell, um, went to sell ourselves to that, uh, to that, initially it was by a, a family member who knew that knew the, the chap who owns NFTO, but then when I met, met the, the managing director, then actually, yes, it was making sure I was well presented, wearing a team top, wearing a tight top. I put my yeah. mascara on. <laughs> but it's again, it's, um, it's selling yourself, took a video along, showing pictures of the team, what the team had done, and straight away, they're buying into it, but it's, you need to get that inside link. When we have tried, we've previously tried corporate uh, sponsorship with 
with other companies, but if you don't have a real good in with them, someone to go face to face to see them sending emails often doesn't work. So you need to think about who you know and uh, sort of well connected people who you can who can use and to, uh, connect with to actually to to go to big companies that have got the funding. Again, there will want payback, um, whether it's from advertising or often um, often it's more you then using their images. Uh, them using your images or providing corporate days with the NFTO. We did some cycling. The world record is the world camp US. Yeah. Yeah. I guess one of the unexpected uh, sponsorship deals really corporate was Accenture. So if any of you go on holiday in any of the airports, you'll see a massive 100 way skydiving canopy formation record, a big diamond. So that's pretty much in every single airport around the world, and that is part of a corporate deal that we managed to get post-event. So there's also the opportunity to get corporate money from events afterwards as well. If you've got a really good image, then it may be something that a marketing person can tie in. So uh, yeah, next time you go through Heathrow and you're like that, have a look. There's big, big posters taller than I am with a big uh, skydiving canopy formation record on there. So. Don't think that you need to get it pre-event. You can always look at your publicity and go back and say, look, this is a really good fig picture. How about stamping your name on it and using it in your publicity catalogs? It's really annoying when we're going through the, uh, going through the airports and seeing Maria's uh, canopy up on the uh, wall every time we go through. But, you know, there you go. She's very proud. So, yeah, it's giving something back to the company. And they, there is reasons for sponsorship because they, the company does gain from it from tax reasons as well. Also, the company that you work for. Um, sometimes there are hidden gems within your company that that you can work, that you can get. You, can, you might be able to buy time, extra annual leave. You might be able to get a free annual leave uh, for, for for representing your country. Um, and they may, they also have a marketing budget, especially if you work for a big company. Um, and they but they will need sort of feedback. Give some again. They want stuff for their corporate magazine, as you can see here. That was. Oh, Maria, I think Maria on her company website. That was Laura, previous teammate on her company's website. Um, but there are definitely, definitely op opportunities. I know for when you're in Kaizen, you guys from your work managed to get some some teams got some team members got some sponsorship. And obviously for the military, there's plenty of opportunities. And I can talk in detail further if you if you uh, an early a young military team that you're not sure uh, what uh, is available. There's plenty available for the military as well. So BPA funding. I know we're, we're standing here and uh, I know NFTO have already got their funding for the year, so you might be thinking, what are we talking about uh, funding about? Well, hopefully you guys already know this, but the BPA have put in a funding document. It's available online on the BPA website. And it's basically, it's not just about funding competitors for medals. And the BPA are looking at our future potential too. So hopefully you'll know that there's a thing called the NAC registration. And this is mainly just to let the BPA, BPA know who you are. So if you are a team and you have got an idea of training, doesn't matter how loose it actually is, or you've been on a team with several team members and you want to like red make sure that the BPA know who you are, register with them. Put yourself down on the NAC registration. Your team might change, but you know it's worth letting them know because they can't, you know, if you don't ask, you don't get. So if the BPA don't know who you are, they can't actually just give you any random funding. Um, the next thing in line is to submit a training plan. I mean, let the BPA know what your intentions actually are. You know, if you're thinking of maybe doing 50 jumps a year, but staying together for three years, you know, that's that's a training plan, that's showing commitment. And the BPA might be willing to say, okay, well, this trip, this team's coming up, you know, um, whether it's free flight, FS, whatever it actually is, you know, you can go out there and go, well, they're gonna stay together and they're gonna learn together. So maybe it's worth investing in these guys. The last one is, you know, to demonstrate commitment. Um, you know, if you look back historically, I think you'll find that um, I have, I know Maria has, I know probably Anna, any might have done as well is like, We've all coached at roadshows, that's for sure. And we've all submitted articles to uh, Skydive the Mag. And um, the important thing about that is, is that you know, you're showing commitment to giving back to grassroots level. You know, even if you don't think you're a coach, right? You probably are. You have enough experience below your belt to like, at least say how you can get together as a team, for example. You know, I think Pete Allen's coming in later to say how to put a team together, and he's been doing it for a very long time. Um, so, you know, these are things you need to demonstrate the commitment that you can to, the, to, to roadshows and to articles. And, you know, let the BPA know that you're doing that. That's the most important thing. You know, they don't know everybody. So it's important to say whichever team you've registered, you know, whatever training plan you've submitted, let them know that you, member of such team, is actually doing these roadshows. You know, you volunteered your time to be able to do it. Or, yes, I've submitted this article. Because, again, if they don't know, they won't know who you are.
you know, wear a pink jacket every now and again. You'd be surprised how much people actually notice who you are. Um, the funding application itself. So, you know, moving on to actually getting funding for potentially for competing or for training. Um, you know, again, they, they have got a list of things, that, of, of criteria that you need to do, but, you know, potential medalist. You know, if you come fourth or better in your category, potentially you could get medal at a world championships, for example. Not everybody can achieve that. There are other things that you could attend. So if it's a first category event, like an indoor event, for example, then we've now got world events indoors that you could potentially apply for funding for that you could medal in. You know, you look at um, Ben Broad and Luke Warren, you know, they've just come away with a bronze medal at a uh, world indoor uh, meet in free fly. You know, it, it's possible, you know, and if you get some funding and say, well, we're going to do this, we're going to attend this, and the way that the free fly dynamic works, the two-way dynamic works is, Actually, you've seen just with the Dynamo Reds recently in the Windor Championships, these guys came along and they got a bronze medal. So you could put that type of stuff down as well as a first category event to, to apply for funding. The other thing is like skills improvement as well. Like, you know, if you've, we look at Mikey Lovemore, he's a prime example of somebody, you know, that has been funded but has improved his skills from doing that. And look at what he's achieving now. He's somebody that's been noticed, he fulfilled this criteria and he got through to get the funding that he actually wanted. Uh, one thing I wanted to note, just finally, was that if you look at, if you go online and you look at who, which teams actually got funding this year, it's not only NFTO, for example, or, or Microclimate, who are going to the World Meet, or Varial, uh, for example, who are also going to the World Meet. Um, there are other teams that got funding, so there's about three, four way teams that got some funding, and the reason they got the funding is because they're up and coming teams, they put their registration in, they submitted a training plan, and they've demonstrated commitment. They're doing loads of road shows. So, you know, examples of Vision, Phoenix, who are all dressed in their matching gear, you'll see around. Um, and also, I think Formula as well got some funding. And there's also a couple of crew teams as well that got some funding, which is not that well known about. But it's because they, they put in the effort to, to let the BPA know who they were to begin with and have positive intent to do stuff and to make sure they're representing the BPA in the correct way by road shows and writing articles. That's why they got the funding to begin with. So don't forget about the BPA funding. It's out there for up-and-coming teams as well, not just the established teams. Then the Royal Aero Club. So this is the trust bursary. It's gen generally for 16 to 21 year olds, and it's extendable to 24 year olds. You get up to 750 pounds, and 60% of the bursary is awarded to BPA members. Um, the website's on there if you want it. This is aimed at people who are just starting out in the sport, which is why it's for 16 to 21 year olds. But also, you know, you can use these things for getting, you know, the stickers in your, in your uh, license. So if you're looking to get your FS1, fair enough, most of us need to get that. But, you know, if you want to get your FF1, for example, you know, you want to get some coaching in the tunnel. You want to get your, your wingsuit, um, WS1, WS2. You want to do a CH2, a CH1, CH2 canopy handling course. These are things that you can actually apply for to get an aero, aero club bursary for, which you might not be aware of. But if it's something that you want to learn and it's like something like getting something where it can actually enable you to be safer or to learn a new skill set in the sport that you can apply for this uh, Royal Aero Club bursary. And um, moving on. Get ready for sponsorship this year, Marie. Cheers. <laughs> so we talked a little bit about what there is sponsorship wise. Now the big question is how do we get sponsorship? It's not just a case of walking up to a manufacturer and going, hey I'm awesome, give me some money, give me some discount. It's a few things that you need to do. Get a catchy name. Now, when we say catchy name, you want something that everyone finds funny. Sometimes rude names are funny, but to sponsors, rude names aren't so funny because they're not going to be able to print it in their magazines or articles. So find a catchy name that people are going to think, oh, that stands out, I'll remember that name. Maybe not ISIS. Maybe not ISIS. So um, my teammate here was originally called Bodyfly ISIS and then... Yes, goddess of the sky. Unfortunately, a little bit of a fracas out in the Middle East put a negative side spin to it. So they had to quickly change their name. Uh, hence why NFTO suddenly became the new name. But that's one example of picking a name that works for you. ISIS all of a sudden turned into a really bad name to have. A lot of negative feedback around it, so they needed to change it. So what you have in a name, if you're thinking long term, is actually quite a lot of hard work to find one that fits. If you're only going to have a fun team for nationals, then yeah, call yourself whatever you like to be. But if you're thinking long term and you want sponsorship, you need to be thinking of a catchy name that companies are happy to have plastered on their catalogues. Next one, get yourself out there. The only way that you're going to get sponsorship is by people knowing who you are. Now, 
doesn't need to be that you're waiting for that team to happen. Get your name out before that team happens. So go to events. Go to your free-flying events, your FS events, your big-way events, so everyone knows who you are. Post lots of pictures on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Yeah, you can get sponsorship as you as a team, as a personal person. When you join a team, you can then bring your brand, should we say, to the sponsor. So don't think, oh, well, I won't worry now. I'll wait till I get a four-way team, eight-way team together. Start getting some notice. People know who you are in the sports because that will help once you've got that team together. Now, the other thing is you've got to promote yourself and sport. So we've already mentioned about writing articles. Sponsors love it when you can put their name up in print to do with whatever article you want. Now, some of you are probably thinking, I don't really know much about skydiving. What could I write? Well, you could do first-hand experiences of a newbie, for instance. You know, how you were how you're feeling that first time getting on a drop zone, doing your first courses. You know, how you got to make your teammates from rookie to single A to triple A. You don't need to worry. Everyone's got a story to tell. So don't think I'll leave it to the more experienced people. Your first free fly jump. Yeah, first free fly. <laughs> um, but yeah, the big thing is you'll always be able to find an article to write on. It's just using a bit of imagination. And you know what? Half the time, think about what you wanted to know when you were learning. You know, there's going to be another few thousand people all with those same thoughts. So just think back to you as a beginner and try and think of some articles there. Coaching is another one. If you're coaching, then lots of people know who you are. It's a good way of getting brand awareness from your sponsors out to newbies. So if you can do one-on-one, -on -one, I mean, could be in the tunnel, could be jumping, you know, could be jumping with them or it could be on the ground and coaching a rookie team for instance. So don't think about it being high-end. It could literally simply be a scratch team at nationals. You've got 60 jumps of coaching. Jumps, you know a little bit about four-weight, go and help that rookie team that's a fun team that have literally got together at nationals. That's going to be your step onto coaching. Next thing is take part in a variety of events. Yeah, The more you can get your face out there on pictures, articles, the more the sponsors are going to know who you are. So don't worry that it's only got to be four-weight. It can be eight-way, it can be free fly, uh, it could be big ways, wing seating. The more different events you can get, the wider the audience you're going to have for that potential sponsor to see their name being advertised. Last thing, do your research on potential sponsors. Find out about the company, find out what they want. Uh, for instance, PD is well known for not sponsoring four-way teams. They're more inclined to sponsor people that are AFF instructors, coaches. That side of things. So learn what your sponsor wants, what information they normally gather up. So yeah, PD, they'll all ask you about your coaching. They don't care that you're a gold medalist, silver medalist, world record holder. What they want to see is that their name can go to the most widest audience. So yeah, they normally gear up to coaches, AFF instructors, warp instructors, that sort of thing. So make sure you do your research. Um, the other thing is, Make sure that you feel proud of that product you're, you're going to be sponsoring because you're going to get lots of newbies asking you about it. And you're going to feel pretty bad if some poor newbie that's got no money suddenly bought a £200 helmet because they saw you wear it and you didn't actually like it but you didn't have the guts to tell them. So make sure when you get that sponsor, you feel confident in it. You will get lots of people asking you about it. How does it fit? Is it comfortable? Do you have any issues with fogging? That sort of stuff. What's the customer service like? So... Please don't just go with any sponsor. You need to feel proud of that product, committed to it, so that when people ask you questions, you can confidently give them the information. So hopefully that's a bit about uh, sponsors. Now, you don't need to be the best four-way or eight-way jumper to get sponsorship. You can get it through being an ambassador to the sport. Now, there's lots and lots of ways of becoming ambassadors. Um, the picture behind us was the recent World Air Games. So you've got a lot of um, high-end jumpers there. Having a bit of fun, shall I say, at that competition. But you know what? We were all promoting BPA. And we were all promoting skydiving. So that's one opportunity to become an ambassador. Another opportunity is going to something like the World Cup. Now, some of you may or may not be aware, the World Cup isn't just the top team that goes. You will have four teams from that discipline. So if you're an eight-way jumper, you can put an eight-way team together, or maybe a four-way jumper, and think, oh, we might a bit of fun, become an ambassador to the BBA. Find four other friends, put an eight-way team together, and you might have the opportunity to go to World Cup and represent 
become ambassador to the sport. So uh, that's one little thing that most teams aren't aware of. It's four teams to each discipline. Um, the next thing is, if you're going to be an ambassador, you need to make sure that your behaviour fits. So um, we're not saying not to have fun, um, or we'll not be silly, but you need to be shown to be promoting the BPA. So let's just make sure that when we are out there that we are being ambassadors to the BPA and also our sponsors as well. So if you're going to be drunk, just be careful not to post all those drunk pictures of you in your BPA uniform or if your sponsor's uniform, okay? Take your jacket off. Yeah, take your jacket off, put it in your bag. <laughs> um, so that's one thing though. If you're going to be an ambassador, you need to make sure you're showing the right persona. Now, I've spoken a bit about four-way, eight-way. You can also do big ways. And you can also do lots of other activities, wingsuiting, canopy piloting, canopy formation. The idea is the more you can inspire people to come out and join you, the more chance you have of filling those requirements for sponsorship. So these are some fun pictures. Um, we've got on the top there, we've got 2.202 way that there's about 20 of us Brits went out to do. Showcase to the world how good UK skydivers are. Um, got a fun picture of us in the corner. Um, and also this an event that me and Ray went to. Uh, we're not free flyers, we're learning to be. So we're back being students like a lot of you in the room. It's a great way of having a bit of fun and becoming ambassadors, okay? <laughs> that was the female ninja event, so if there's any wannabe free fly women come and speak to us, there'll be another event next year, this year, I should say. Um, um, so that's, that's the main things that we think we've covered. Uh, oh, 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 hold on, I think we need to get... This is a prime example of where they asked me, by the way, because can you see me in this picture? No. This was a long time before I left the team. That, that was yeah. the, that was the you could, coming you out, You could right? see where it was coming, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, anyway. coming out. Sorry, I didn't know that picture was in there. Just, again, it was all about social media. We need to just get a quick selfie with you guys for Twitter and Facebook. Hold so on. Everyone smile, smile. Should, should we all move forward so that it's not as low to be? There we are, there we are. Um, She's out of shop. Anyway, I think we've covered everything. Yes. Yeah. 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 We covered. So I just go down the old list. So, if you've got any questions, we're here for questions. Thank you.